Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a winter storm which is going to be moving throughout parts of the northern plains, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and then back through the interior northeast where a lot of those areas could be dealing with some decent snowfall added on to what you've already seen from winter storm Orlena. We'll be recapping what happened with winter storm Orlena because there were a few reports over 30 inches of snowfall and we're still going to be talking about what's to come with winter storm Orlena. We're also going to be giving you my snowfall forecast for this upcoming snowstorm and then we're going to talk about those very cold temperatures coming in right behind uh, that snowstorm so here is what the current National Weather Service page looks like. And actually, before we do that, uh, let's talk about your daily high and low temperatures for uh, yesterday. In Nogales, Arizona, they got to 78 degrees, and that was tied with the International Airport in Miami, uh, where they also got to, uh, to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the low temperature was in Big Piney, uh, Wyoming, where they got to just one degree above zero. Uh, and it was actually quite mild in terms of the low temperatures before the past few low temperatures for the entire lower 48 were in the uh, negative 20s to negative 30s so this is definitely a bit warmer than what we've been seeing recently but it is still definitely very cold and we're going to be dealing with a lot more cold air coming in in just a couple days coming into the central and even spilling into the eastern United States so we have some winter weather advisories in effect for the west coast especially in the higher elevations more back through the Rockies as well and a couple of winter storm watches and warnings scattered in there we have winter storm mornings in the pink throughout parts of the northeast as well as uh, some winter weather advisories in those purples right there uh, that are scattered from northern Virginia all the way up through into New Hampshire and then we also have another area back through uh, into West Virginia North Carolina Tennessee Virginia and into Kentucky there with some more winter storm mornings in the southern Appalachias for the higher elevations in North Carolina Tennessee and southwestern most Virginia we also have some freeze warnings in northern Florida and some red flag warnings in effect for East Central uh, Florida as well. So even though your uh, high temperature yesterday was in Miami, uh, it doesn't look like it'll stay that way uh, for too long because we will be dealing with more of that cold air uh, shifting further to the east and your high temperature in the next couple of days will likely shift over to the western United States because they might get a little bit of a break from that colder weather they were dealing with. So here's a kind of a recap of what we saw uh, from this storm uh, and some of the snow reports from Montauk, New Jersey. They got 33.2 inches that was the top report. Springtown, Pennsylvania got 31.2 inches of snowfall. Mendham, New Jersey got 30 inches. One mile west-northwest of, of uh, Howley, Pennsylvania uh, got about 30 inches of snowfall as well. And then Howley, Pennsylvania itself got 29 inches of snowfall. So that was your top five reports. And I didn't include this one. There was one report officially on the NOAA website. And I'm pretty sure it's just somebody uh, kind of making a joke. They put 140 inches of snowfall in Harrison, New Jersey. And I'm pretty sure they did not see 140 inches of snowfall. I'm pretty sure that's a false report right there. But just to go through a couple of the bigger cities and what they got, uh, Boston got 1.2 inches so far in Logan, uh, in Logan International, but you go uh, just about 15 miles westward and in Winchester, Massachusetts, just under 20 miles uh, from Boston and even closer than that, they got 18.2 inches of snowfall, believe it or not. New York City got 17.2, Erie 2.4 inches, Philadelphia 7.2 seven inches Hartford Connecticut 12 inches of snowfall Binghamton you guys got nine inches of snowfall so far and it's still snowing over some of those areas uh, DC and Reagan International Airport they got 2.6 inches Albany got 9.5 inches and then moving through parts of the Ohio Valley they got uh, in Columbus 3.2 inches and in Pittsburgh 3.8 inches Cleveland 2.5 inches Indianapolis 4 inches Chicago and O'Hare International Airport they got 10.8 inches and then in Detroit they got just just one inch of snowfall out of this event. And it's still snowing over some of these areas in the northeast. Uh, and here's the current radar picture. We see that low pressure uh, offshore of uh, the uh, of New England as of right now, and it's bringing in those strong northeasterly and northerly winds uh, through the northeast. And that's allowing some more of that snow to pile up for parts of the northeast. And really, it's now parts of the interior northeast uh, shot to get some more of that heavier snowfall. And now parts of Maine are seeing some of the heaviest snowfall out of this event so far. So 
Here's that snowstorm that we're talking about, and let's start timing it out for you guys using the high-resolution European model. Uh, we see that uh, snow starts to move through parts of Wyoming, Montana, and it's going to start to get into North Dakota by tomorrow morning. So this would be uh, by right around 12 p.m. Central Time. Tomorrow, we're dealing with that snow scattered throughout the Rockies and even moving into the Northern Plains. Behind the system, by the way, is what a lot of you guys were talking about in yesterday's comment section, that very cold Arctic air mass that's going to be moving through, and it's going to go all the way. Uh, to the eastern United States, and it's going to bring potentially below zero uh, temperatures. We're going to be going that after, uh, and kind of talking about that after we talk about the snowfall forecast for this event. And I'm uh, definitely I will uh, talk about the very cold temperatures that we will be seeing in the next few days. So this would be by tomorrow, right around uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. We're looking at more of that snow, very light at this point, still through the Dakotas and back through Wyoming and Colorado. And then it really starts to kind of formulate together. We see uh, a low pressure start to uh, develop over parts of Kansas and Colorado. We're seeing some snow uh, moving up further to the north into the Dakotas uh, and back through Nebraska. And now we're going to start to see the system really ramp up. So we start to see a low pressure uh, kind of intensify a little bit. Uh, it is still a very weak system by this point. You see a little stripe of snowfall moving from Minnesota to about Kansas there. And then if you continue this forward uh, and move this further to the east, you see that by Thursday, uh, by this point, this is 12 p.m. Central Time, we're looking at more of that snow moving throughout the Great Lakes, so from the UP of Michigan through Wisconsin, Minnesota, uh, northernmost Illinois, parts of and most of Iowa, and back through Missouri, Kansas, and Nebraska there, that's where you're dealing with more of that snow, and you're going to see that continue to head further to the east. We see in some of those darker blues, that's where you're dealing with heavier bands of snowfall, and you will likely see a few bands that get some heavier snowfall here and there, uh, and that could definitely add to some of your accumulation totals. Here would be where your low pressure is by this point and this is going to be very important because you have an occluded front right here uh, which is going further to the north and then you have a warm front that's out ahead of the system kind of like this and then behind the system is where you're actually seeing a cold front uh, move by. So that's kind of the dynamics of this system. And that whole uh, system is going to continue to move further to the north and to the east and start to deliver parts of Michigan, Ohio, even back through Pennsylvania, New York, and into the uh, into parts of northern New England, a lot more snowfall. So here would be by Friday. Uh, actually, this would be by Thursday right around 6 p.m. Here's by Friday right around midnight, uh, so 12 a.m. on Friday. We're looking at that low pressure back through into uh, Ohio and, Indi and, and, and Indiana by this point. And now we're dealing with that occluded front further uh, to the north like this. We have your warm front out ahead of it. And then we have that cold front, of course, behind it. And that's where you might actually be dealing with a little bit of convective activity back through the Tennessee Valley and back through into the, into the uh, southeast there. We're dealing with snow for much of Michigan. It's leaving Wisconsin and Illinois by this point, and it's starting to get into parts of West Virginia, Virginia, uh, and into parts of Pennsylvania by this point. And then this would be by uh, Friday right around, uh, this would be 3 a.m. Uh, Central Time. Uh, this would be 4 a.m. Eastern Time by this point. And we're dealing with that system continuing to head further to the east. We will see a wedge of cold air into the northeast. So you might start out as some snow on the onset, but it should switch over to rain for a lot of these areas that uh, that aren't um, along the interior northeast so uh, if you live closer to the coastal areas you will likely be a mostly rain event out of this one although a start of snow is not out of the question uh, we're dealing with heavier snow as you get through parts of Pennsylvania New Jersey upstate New York uh, Massachusetts Vermont and New Hampshire by this point and this would be by Friday uh, in the middle of the day so right around 1 p.m. Eastern time we're dealing with this system carrying off to the north and to the east. We continue this forward, and you see that pulls away into northern New England. The entire state of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, uh, in the western part of Maine, is dealing with snow by this point. And then it really overtakes Maine, eastern New Hampshire, still dealing with snow by this point, and going up over to the lower resolution European model. It's still snowing over some of these areas all the way through Saturday morning, uh, and then it finishes up. And then the European model, uh, you'll barely see it on this model right here, uh, or on this frame, but it does bring another system pretty much exactly the same as winter storm 
more Lena, although a little bit faster, and actually bring some of those same areas some more snowfall. So we're going to be watching this weekend uh, and into early next week uh, to see if there will be some sort of uh, Orlina, Orlina copycat system that does try to move throughout the same areas, uh, and there's definitely a lot that we still have to figure out. So I'll definitely be bringing you guys updates as we get closer to that event. Now, here would be your snowfall forecast from the European model. Not mine, but I will show you mine in just a little bit. Uh, we are dealing with anywhere in the blues, 2 to 6 inches, 6 to 10 inches in the purples, 10 to about 15 inches in the pinks. And then as you get into the lighter pinks, that's 20 plus inches of snowfall. Whatever you see in the northeast is definitely enhanced from Orlina. Uh, the maximum will be about 6 inches in northern Maine, but this is mainly a 2 to 4 inch event in a lot of the northeast. So most of this is what's from Orlina, which is still wrapping up here so uh, really you can kind of count this out and that really doesn't count to the system uh, but all of this is from that system right here uh, from Nebraska and Kansas eastward to about Michigan where you are dealing with up upwards of 10 to 15 inches of snowfall out of this event Here's what the GFS model is showing, uh, and we're dealing with pretty much the same thing, although it has shifted a little bit further to the west with those heavier, uh, heaviest totals. It's not showing those 6-plus inch amounts for eastern Michigan anymore, and it's actually showing 6-plus inches for western Wisconsin, which wasn't in the 6-plus inches in the previous model run. And then here's what the Canadian model is showing with snowfall, and it's actually quite similar to the European, kind of a blend of both of them. Uh, and I think I am agreeing a lot more with the Canadian model just because it is more of a blend of what both of the GFS and the European model are showing. So here's what my forecast is calling for under an inch of snowfall from now through, uh, or actually from Wednesday through Saturday, uh, where we're dealing with uh, under an inch of snowfall in the light blue. So a coating, maybe a dusting of snowfall up to an inch of snowfall uh, anywhere throughout parts of the northern plains, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, back through much of the northeast, except for the immediate coastal areas. Here's that one to three inch area, and that extends from Nebraska, Iowa, and Missouri all the way up through Michigan, back through into part of the Smoky Mountains in eastern West Virginia and into western Maryland, and then back through northern Pennsylvania, much of upstate New York, into Massachusetts, and then all of Vermont and Hampshire, Maine. That's where I'm looking at one to three inches of snowfall, three to six inches of snowfall in this area from northern Illinois, northern Indiana, northward up through much of Michigan, except for the areas around Detroit, and then back through eastern and central Wisconsin and into the the UP of Michigan, that's where I'm looking at three to six inches of snowfall, and then another area for eastern Vermont, northern and central New Hampshire, and back through all of Maine except for the coastal areas. And then here's that six to 12 inch area. You see that move through eastern Wisconsin, uh, the eastern UP, or much of the UP of Michigan actually, except for the western part, and then northern Michigan, as well as a little bit of northernmost New Hampshire and northern and interior Maine. That's where I'm thinking you'll get probably closer to six to eight inches, although in the Great Lakes, you guys could be dealing with maybe up to 10 to about, about 14 inches or so of snowfall out of this event. Now, here's those very cold temperatures that we want to talk about. Uh, so, this is your system uh, right now, and this would be by Thursday. So, these are your low temperatures on Thursday. You can tell where your system is because you can see a little bit of that warmer air nudging up into Missouri, uh, and we're dealing with that cold air on either side of the low pressure, especially in the western United States, which is where it is much colder. But look at all this up in Canada, that very cold air that's up there where it's below zero and actually double digits below zero in a lot of those areas. Uh, and by the way, this is all in Fahrenheit. Uh, here, so we are dealing with some of those below zero temperatures by Friday starting to spill into Minnesota and North Dakota. It gets a lot more widespread by Saturday, and this might be what sets the stage for that next system. If you have a cold air mass in place, of course, you will be able to get some snow if that system moves through that area. So this is what's going to set the stage for your next uh, kind of winter storm or Lena copycat system uh, that might move through, and that's going to really be very, very cold air. Some of the coldest air of the season for some of these areas uh, through northern Indiana, northern Illinois, northern Iowa, through much of Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, and into Montana there, and it's just getting started. If you look at Sunday, the, uh, February 7th, we're looking at more of that snow, or more of that uh, cold air moving through parts of the northern plains, uh, and then if you look at what Monday brings, uh, more of the same, still closer to negative 30 degrees in northern Minnesota, negative uh, 20, and you get a little bit further to the south, and by the way, in those dark purples, those are still uh, between between 0 and 5 degrees Fahrenheit, so still very, very cold, even if you're not in those below zero areas. And then 
here would be by Tuesday, here's by Wednesday, here's by Thursday, and you can still see that it is very, very cold and below zero for a lot of these areas. And these are your low temperatures, of course, your high temperatures will be uh, warmer than this, but you're still dealing with uh, the same general trend of colder temperatures. And it kind of goes along with what Punxsutawney Phil said. Uh, he saw his shadow today, which means that there will be six more weeks of winter, if you do like to believe uh, what uh, Punxsutawney Phil uh, says. And that definitely is going along with what we're seeing right here. We're we're seeing uh, very cool temperatures spilling into much of the country, uh, really from the west coast to the east coast, dealing with those cold temperatures at least for the first part of February, uh, or at least for the first 10 days or so of February, it looks like, uh, and it looks like it'll be very, very active, so for those of you who like the snow and cold and uh, like what uh, like the pattern that we're in, uh, we have more of this to come, we have more snow to come most likely, and I'll be updating you guys and giving you my snowfall forecast for all of these systems that are upcoming, so uh, this is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.